the number one priority for reopening schools this fall is student and staff safety. Our reopening plan is based on four scenarios. One, more traditional where all students come back in person. Ideally, that's what we believe in-person learning matters. Then there's the most restrictive where we have all students on a distance learning platform, very similar to what we did this past spring. Between those two scenarios, we've got a partial reopening and a more restrictive reopening. The partial reopening involves uh, groups up to 30 students that are in stable groups. At the sixth grade level, we would prioritize those students in person. High school, we would prioritize our ninth graders. In a more restricted environment, we would have stable groups up to 15, and they would be on a rotating schedule. So stable groups are like a family. They play together, they eat together, uh, they learn together. And by that way, we can decrease the number of interactions. So there are times when we want to keep the number of students in the school low. So we'll have some students learning physically in school while other students learning at home, and then they'll rotate. So there's a strong alignment between the turnaround action plan and the reopening plan. The turnaround action plan is built on three principles, engaged communities, excellence in learning, and world-class talent. As we designed our reopening plan, Obviously, we wanted to lead with safety first, but we wanted to also lean in and ensure that we're still having excellence in learning. The other piece is engaged communities. We've had very deep, rich engagement of parents, students, teachers, stakeholders, and community organizations to get feedback on how our reopening plans feel as we move forward with the planning process. We've heard loud and clear from our families that they want a virtual option. So as we plan for students to come back in person, we're also planning for a virtual learning option for parents to be able to opt into. Our virtual learning academy will look a little different than it, than it did in the spring. For high schools, it will be more module-based. They'll have learning codes. It will be self-paced. Remembering what happened in the spring, virtual learning for kindergarten through eighth grade will look close to where teachers will be able to engage with students as frequently as possible. The difference in this virtual learning academy is that parents will have to be more deeply engaged in ensuring that students are connected online, that they're following the lessons, that they're on top of the things that their teachers are asking them to do. Yes, we are requiring masks for all students. There are several mitigation strategies that we've been advised by the DOH that we need to have. Masks for students K-12 has been one of those recommendations. So we will, be, we will be requiring students to wear masks. We've heard loud and clear that parents have a loyalty to their current schools. We're not asking families to move away from their current schools. We have worked with DOH and CDC to come up with very clear guidelines. Our buses hold 75 students. Under the current guidelines, we have to have a decrease in ridership by 67%. So what we've done is we retrofitted our buses to hold 30 students instead of 75. We will also have safety protocols in place where the bus driver will be screening students uh, as they come on the bus, and we will also have them socially distanced. If a student tests positive, we would work closely with DOA to follow all health protocols, and it's very possible that we would have to quarantine the entire class. So it's really important that we're able to assess where students are. We will have a diagnostic assessment that will give teachers data around where students are academically. From that data, we'll be able to close the learning gaps and also accelerate learning. While the physical buildings have been closed, our maintenance and operations teams have been busy at work, going through school by school, ensuring that we're making much needed upgrades and repairs. We've also worked with the city and state to pass a multi-million dollar bond to begin some major projects that's gonna include renovations and upgrades to many of our facilities. 
My final message to the Providence School community is, most of all, we miss you. We can't wait for our students to come back, but we also wanna make sure when we bring you back that it's the safest manner possible. Also, we want you to be flexible. We know that we may have to toggle back among scenarios throughout the entire semester. So it's very important that we're flexible and patient with the process.